With my sister perched on my arm, I walked to the elevator. A businessman with a rolling suitcase was waiting by the doors. His eyes widened when he saw me. I must have looked pretty strange. A tall black kid in dirty, ragged Egyptian clothes, with a weird box tucked under one arm and a bird of prey perched on the other. How's it going? I said. I'll take the stairs. He hurried off. The elevator took me to the ground level. Sadie and I crossed to the departures curb. I looked around desperately, hoping to see Bast, but instead I caught the attention of a curbside policeman. The guy frowned and started lumbering in my direction. Stay calm, I told Sadie. Resisting the urge to run, I turned and walked through the revolving doors. Here's the thing. I always get a little edgy around police. I remember when I was like seven or eight and still a cute little kid, it wasn't a problem. But as soon as I hit eleven, I started to get the look, like, what's that kid doing here? Is he going to steal something? I mean, it's ridiculous, but it's a fact. I'm not saying it happens with every police officer, but when it doesn't happen, let's just say it's a pleasant surprise. This was not one of the pleasant times. I knew the cop was going to follow me, and I knew I had to act calm and walk like I had a purpose, which is not easy with a kite on your arm. Christmas vacation, so the airport was pretty full, mostly families standing in line at the ticket counters, kids arguing and parents labeling luggage. I wondered what that would be like, a normal family trip, no magic problems or monsters chasing you. Stop it, I told myself. You've got work to do. But I didn't know where to go. Would Bast be inside the security? Outside? The crowds parted as I walked through the terminal. People stared at Sadie. I knew I couldn't wander around looking lost. It was only a matter of time before the cops, young man, I turned. It was the police officer from outside. Sadie squawked, and the cop backed up, resting his hand on his nightstick. You can't have pets in here, he told me. I have tickets. I reached into my pockets, and then I remembered that Bast had our tickets. The cop scowled. You better come with me. Suddenly a woman's voice called out. There you are, Carter. Bast was hurrying over, pushing her way through the crowd. I'd never been happier to see an Egyptian god in all my life. Somehow she'd managed to change clothes. She wore a rose-colored pantsuit, lots of jewelry, and a cashmere coat, so she looked like a wealthy businesswoman. Ignoring the cop, she sized up my appearance and wrinkled her nose. Carter, I told you not to wear those horrible falconry clothes. Honestly, you look like you've been sleeping in the wild. She took out a handkerchief and made a big production of wiping my face while the policeman stared. Uh, ma'am, he finally managed. Is this your nephew? Bast lied. I'm so sorry, officer. We're heading to Memphis for a falconry competition. I hope he hasn't caused any problems. We're going to miss our flight. 